Kamala Harris is not an exception. There are a myriad of other super talented, competent, mm -hmm. smart, um, politically astute women, women of color. And Biden had four black women to choose from, right? And wow. he picked Kamala again, who I thought is, who I think is the best choice for the moment. Right? Hi, this is Dr. Jed McCosco, and we have the pleasure of a repeat person <laughs> today. This is Professor Nadia Brown coming in for another interview at academicinfluence.com and Wake Forest University. And there are just a few questions that I've been dying to ask you, Professor Brown. First and foremost is right after we interviewed last time, uh, Kamala Harris was appointed as the vice presidential nominee. And I was just wondering, how do you think that's going to affect everything about the election, about future politics. So tell us how this how this looks. I think it was a smart choice for Biden. I think he um, and the Democratic Party read the signs of the times to pick the right candidate for this particular moment. So um, I'm enthusiastic about that. I think hats mm -hmm. off to the Democratic Party for being kind of to being forward looking. And their convention that they put on last week really showcased, um, I think, the future of what partisan politics will look like. I also think it'll be a hard, um, it'll be very hard to go back to a candidate or to a slate of, to a ticket where they're just four white men running against each other after, um, after this election. I think that both parties will be thinking more systematically about, um, other candidates of color from different genders, ethnicities, backgrounds as a way to reach out to, um, the changing face of America, right? The demographics of the United States are increasingly becoming more and more non-white, um, non-Christian, and um, larger groups of immigrants are becoming, um, you know, they're becoming American citizens who are now taking part in the political process. So I don't think, I think that this, um, this pick of Kamala Harris is really opening the floodgates of what I think the future of American politics will look like. Well, thank you for sharing that uh, interesting information. Do you think that... Um, if he had picked a different African-American female, things would have gone differently. And, and were there other candidates that you were aware of? Sure. Yeah. So Biden had had a, really an embarrassment of riches, right? So um, this is the thing that I really want to underscore and, and drive home. So Kamala Harris is not an exception. There are a myriad of other super talented, competent, mm -hmm. smart, um, politically astute women, women of color. And Biden had four black women to choose from, right? And wow. he picked Kamala again, who I thought is, who I think is the best choice for the moment, right? Someone who has an immigrant background dealing mm -hmm. with um, a pandemic that is being really cast as an Asian, right? As an Asian disease to have someone who can speak to both um, Black ancestry and, and South Asian ancestry is something mm -hmm. to, um, that was really useful in a time where President Trump is really flaming these anti-immigrant and these anti-Asian flames. Mm -hmm. Couple that yeah. right with Black Lives Matter movement, um, so and she's also a centrist, right? So mm -hmm. I think that she was the right choice, but it does not, you know, um, it's not that she's an exception at all. Mm -hmm. And women in politics, um, people of color in politics, really is just showcasing that there is a backbench of folks who are willing and able to join a major party um, ticket or uh, lead one um, in the near future. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, my last question for you on this little short interview is, are you more um, wanting to go into politics or less wanting to go into politics as these things all unfold? <laughs> oh, that is a good question. I did not anticipate that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go on the record as saying either way. I'm just wondering... Um, for a person who's a political scientist, there's always that option, right? If you're a professor of political science, you could always be yes. some sort of counselor of political people yes, or yes. What, so what would you want to do? How could you yeah. see yourself 10 years from now? Oh, that is an exciting question. Um, yeah. So it's funny because the other day um, I, I thought about running for school board just because oh. <laughs> I now have a kid. I have a kindergartner now. Um, mm -hmm. And this e-learning situation has been very challenging. <laughs> so mm, for all I was like, of us, I can, yes. Yeah, and I was like, I could probably do a, you know, add some expertise to the situation. Um, 
But I, yeah, I, I got into political science because I knew that I could not run for office. <laughs> I feel like I, am, I, I have a very limited filter and oftentimes what I think comes out, which is mm. not a skill, uh, you know, it, it is not something that is seen as a skill in politics. But I am very happy to assist in campaigns and to help others who are thinking about crafting their political message. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just think there might be some some skeletons in the closet, some things that I've said. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been pretty vocal on a lot of things. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, yeah, I, I don't have that buttoned up personality that mm-hmm. um, I think I've probably given a lot of fodder to, to people mm-hmm. who would what not to see me in in elected office yeah (laughs) right wow well so you're not as much of an Aaron Burr as you are more more of like a Hamilton (laughs) oh yes yes I'm definitely on the Hamilton side (laughs) well thank you so much Professor Brown for another wonderful short interview that we really appreciate and I will uh just um look forward to our next encounter perfect thank you so much Jed